This horse is here for training for 30 days. This was about at the two week mark. Uh, the full eight minutes of this bucking part will be at the end of the video if you want to watch the entire thing. Um, but I hold steady pressure <clears throat> and when the horse is not bucking, release it. So here I'm going to tighten this back cinch and just move him around because I'm going to ride him for the first time with the back cinch. So I want him to really feel that, what it'll do, and they'll feel it a lot if you pull the face and drive the hip. Um, I want to make sure that I have command of my animal, uh, the horse that I'm training, to make sure he can get off of me and not run over the top of me if he reacts to that back cinch. And his owner may never use a back cinch, but so many people will put one on without ever preparing the horse and then they're gonna be off to the rodeo. So I'm just uh, turn him loose there and let him really feel good. it. He does good and now I'm gonna ride him for the first time with a back cinch on. So I did the homework and prepared him. Again, if you wanna see the full uh, treatment he got with the uh, plank rope there at the end of the video it's about eight minutes long um, so you'll be able to see that full here I'm making sure that the horse stands to be mounted. Uh, he offered to walk off a couple of times here so I had to correct him. Uh, he really has been good every time I've gotten on him. Um, so I just rode him around, moved his body a little bit. Uh, after this, after I had quit taping me riding him for a few minutes here at one point uh, when I was practicing moving him on the rail he, he uh, balled up a little bit but uh, he did not buck you know again the back cinch is totally new to him riding's new to him I've done more groundwork more time with him on the ground than under saddle here I'm doing a one rein stop Normally he'd do them better, but again the back cinch adds uh, something else for him to be a little bit concerned about. Um, so I make sure I have a one rein stop if the horse uh, gets upset that I can pull his head and uh, pull him to a stop. I don't want him to spin, I want him to just come up. So I slide down my inside rein. Whichever way the horse's head is tipped, I'll slide down the inside rein, make sure my inside leg is off the horse, and I just sit and stop riding. So I'm not asking him to move him up and release when he stops his feet. So this horse, if I didn't mention it before, has less than two hours in her saddle because I do an hour of groundwork and probably ride him for 15 minutes. Uh, that one more, ride him for 15 minutes. So he's had uh, some flag work, he's dragged a sled off him, he's dragged a bull whip off him. He's done, he's done really good uh, during this month's stay here. Transitions, halt, back up, and some turns on the forehand. And um, he was good, really good, really smart. Hope to learn. Could be a little fractious um, when he was ridden in the ring with another horse, feeding off the other horse. Um, but all in all, very um, happy with his progress. Um, what accomplish while he was here for his 
30 days of training. And now this is the full around eight minutes, if you can bear it. Uh, what I did with the flank cinch um, using a lariat rope around his flanks and just to get him to where if he feels that back cinch that he's not going to um, offload his ride or you know I want to prepare him here so my mentality is if he can handle that rope uh, all the way back without um, bucking, then he can certainly handle a back cinch. There's, you know, a lot of people ask, why do you ever want to use a back cinch? Um, if you're dragging a log, or you're roping. Um, third time charm here. If you're roping off your horse and you rope something and you dally it on the horn, it's going to bring the back of the saddle up. So that back cinch holds that saddle down. Or if you're dragging a log, that back cinch you want to dally onto your horn to help drag a log. And you don't want your saddle coming up. So we start them off kind of in the middle and I'm holding tight, tight pressure. If he does nothing, I release it and send them on. And I'm gonna, he's got slack here. I'm gonna pull and he doesn't buck, I release it. When he starts bucking, here, I'm going to keep holding because I don't want him to learn to buck and make that go away. But the minute he stops, I'll release that pressure on that lariat rope. And by having that long rope and a longer rope in my hand on his halter, he's less apt to be able to get away uh, in the round pen. This is an 85 foot round pen. Most of them are 60. Uh, and if you have a long rope on their face, then they're less apt to get away and be running and bucking off with all this stuff on them. Gets a release when he's quiet. Sending them off again. And release because he did not buck. And when he bucks, I'm just going to hold, 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 maintain that pressure. And the moment that he stops, give him a release. So he'll soon learn that it'll go away if he doesn't buck and that he has to tolerate, tolerate that. Uh, you know, if you are riding and poning another horse and the rope gets under a tail or a a rope grabs them somehow you don't want them to explode so it's uh, just training him to control his emotions and not be upset if something grabs on him like that and i want to do it both directions they can jump over the top of you here and i'm paying attention I've worked with this horse on the ground for a few weeks prior to this so he respects my space and will yield when I asked him to get get over away from me he'll yield and you know he's it's just a reaction it's a natural reaction for them to do um, when something's grabbing him like that this horse gone four years of his life without uh, you know, having a saddle on him, a rider on him, or 
or anything like this done to him. You know, he's he's he did get sacked out by his owner by a lot of things, but certainly not this. And um, so it's just new to him, and he's just got to learn to deal with it. Now that we're going this way, once I got my tools ready, I'm going to pull here. Right there. I didn't do anything, so I release. That was good. And pull, hold, and release. Hold and really snug there. Release. I'm going to go on some more because I'm not done. Now it's way back there in his flanks. Started it out a little more forward. I'm just asking him to disengage his hindquarters there for a minute. And then pull him forward. And back up. Sometimes I'll raise my hand up just to make myself ready. He does really well with that, especially going the, the other direction. You can see he's not not too traumatized by it. Um, yeah. Anyways, it's very dangerous. Uh, you should always have, I always carry a knife on me. Um, but I've never had to cut one out of a fix like this from doing this before, but in other instances I've used it. Um, and a horse can run over the top of you or you can get rope burn, all kind of things can happen. So it's not something for the novice uh, to try, but um, just just what I do to prepare him for a back cinch. And if you enjoyed the video, not recommending anyone do this. Thanks for watching.